Hey guys, special treat today. This, the Engel Savage 120, the pinnacle of German brutalism in ant design. First, we're going to take a little look at it on the bench. Uh, I'll explain there. See you at the bench. I've just finished up revalving and rebiasing this Engel Savage 120. Nothing really special, just quickly go over. Um, it was popping tube, uh, popping fuses, power tubes, put in new 6550s, biased it up with my bias probes. But let's be honest about this amp. I'm going to give it a quick sort of overview of the problems with this thing. Well, in my opinion, this is my opinion, my opinion alone. Nice German amp, usually quite expensive, but I am not impressed internally. PCBs, PCB mounted tubes, these are the power tubes you see here, it's two 6550s. There are some big traces but there are also some very little skinny ones. Not the cleanest build I've ever seen, some of the soldering is not great, you can see flux. There is hot snot bloody everywhere on every connection i get it stop movements but it just looks so janky look at it everywhere everywhere i know it stops movement and transit and things and stops them breaking but for a ser for servicing just not great and I'm, I'm, I'm not impressed i mean look at this I don't know if these were value changes that are done modified later. I, I don't know if someone else has been in here. I don't know the history of this amp. Um, and I'm, I can't tell you much other than what I see in front of me. Um, and get the bias, the bias adjustment is, I kid you not, just right. I'll try and get in the center of my screen right now. That little white dot in there, that's a hole in the PCB to put a screwdriver down. But look what's right above it. You've got the control board. So to buy it, I had to undo, there's, there's three nuts over the jack sockets here and then the two little nuts that hold in the uh, sort of the big old parallel port sort of thing. And then lift this board very gently because these are notoriously crap out of the way so I could adjust this without any fouling because you're right by two of the main power caps here and you've got a screwdriver who's trying to get it down into there. Very fiddly, very annoying, poorly thought out. I mean, you, you could almost do, there's plenty of room on the chassis actually underneath of the amp around here. You could have drilled, they could have drilled a hole there where you could then put a screwdriver down and adjust the bias through there. That would have been useful. Um, yeah, that's my two cents really on this thing. Um, but yeah, by a start, plate voltages being 60, two 6550s trying to get 80 watts out of them. Yeah, 550 volts on the plates. I think they're rated for 600 if you look at the data sheets, but um, high voltage amp to get that amount of power. I can't help thinking four six or sixes might have been a bit more of a a V8 way of doing it rather than a almost like a two-stroke screaming little engine trying to get all that power. Um, just my opinions. You may agree with them, you may not, but that's fine. Yeah, um, um, but push on standoffs. The, the, the PCB is mounted via these plastic ones, top and bottom. Not nice, nutted on. This is it's just that you get, you get vibrations etc. More hot snot everywhere. Someone sneezed at <laughs> all these capacitors, which don't really have any mass to them. They're all hot snotted together to stop them moving. Really not just... I'm sorry I'm not gushing over this amp. I know some people will gush. I mean, yeah, when it's in its head shell with the bars and everything, which you'll see in the playtest, great looking amp. I used to have an Engel Powerball back in the day. Um, I don't have it now, may sell it a lot, but I, I am on the bench, going through my bench speaker, which lives in a box under here, obviously not the greatest tonal thing in the world, but I was having fun with it. I killed a few 
kill 10, 15 minutes mucking around with this thing. So that's been five minutes already. Uh, if you're sticking around already, please give me a like and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. This is all good. Let's hear this beast. So here we have the Engel Savage 120. Um, let's just run through everything. As you can see on the controls, I've got everything set to six. I don't like five, I like setting everything to six on the tone controls. This top half will be your clean and crunch one. The bottom half is your crunch two and the lead channel. Uh, we've got the little volume control matrix here for the four modes. And then over here, we've got the power section. In the power section, you have a doubled up set. You've got a presence and master A and B, and they're identical, but you can switch between two different settings. So let's just go through the clean channel. I've got the sensitivity out and the bright out. And there, I believe they're just putting in different resistance. The sensitivity will just be changing the load, giving you different outputs. And then the bright just brings in a, um, a bright, right cap basically so here it is with my strapped van zant single coils and a duncan little 50 <laughs> usual setup um into the helix, out the loop, into the angle, into my sur reactive load, which is just giving us the load, back into the helix, running my impulse response of the EAS Studios EVH 4x12. channel um <clears throat> is it particularly expiring oh at the contour in let's take the contour out so with the contour in we actually get a mid or some more mid so it's giving us more fendery let's increase the sensitivity So the clean channel on this is better than I remember the Powerball. I thought the Powerball, like the Hughes and Kettner Triumph, had that almost DI'd clean signal. Um, not the most inspiring. This is a bit more... <laughs> feel with the extra sensitivity engage. Just on the edge of breakup, I like that. Um, don't necessarily need the bright switch in though. Um, so yeah, if I put the contour back in, you get a little bit more mids coming in. Um, Pre-shape. Okay, that's scooping some of the mids. So with the pre-shape and the contour engaged on, on the top half, it gets a bit honky now. Yeah, so it's kind of one or the other. And I could be playing with the tone controls here to shape it a bit more, but I think but I'm just trying to go for, um, trying to get the natural character of the amp as it is with, without really going, without really going too far now. Um, let's go over to crunch one. Pull the sensitivity switch out again so all the switches are out. You should see.
sounds a bit anemic. Let's try the depth boost in the power section. <laughs> That's that's pretty cool. Increase the sensitivity. Let's take out the contour. That. Let's put that to the contour back in. pre-shape out. Right. Not sure the bright's working on the crunch. Let's give crunch one. That's a nice channel, that's a, that's a nice marshally. <laughs> Pretty cool. And I'm not like I said. I'm not even messing with the tone controls. That's a pretty cool sound. Let's go to crunch two. Uh, so those uh, sensitivity, bright, pre-shape, all those don't come into play on this channel. It's everything on the top runs on the top. Everything on the bottom works on the bottom a lot. So. <laughs>
you tell I like this app. than a like a two two oh three from what I saw inside. Sue, the lead channel. Um, I've got it set to nine o'clock. Let's see where this takes us from here. <laughs> Sure, I need much more to be honest. Um, let's, 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 let's go for it. Boost. <laughs> 
that's a lot of gain. Really smooth, actually. That's talking the smooth. They've got the rough smooth switch. Um, this is where this high balance comes in. Only on the smooth, you can hear it on the noise. So if I go back to the, the uh, they call it rough. This knob does nothing. I, th I think this is switchable uh, in, the, in the mini matrix sort of thing. <laughs> Let's try some chugga chugga. Okay, we are back with my newish toy. This is a Jackson JS32 King V. Uh, I've changed the pickups out. I've got a, a late 90s JB in here and a 59 in the neck. So, I'm now changed the IR to the EAS Studio Calia oversized 2002 uh, Mesa cabinet with vintage 30s mic'd with the uh, M160 and this we're back on crunch one and I've got the sensitivity engage the bright switch oh, that doesn't really matter oh it does I'm, I tell a lie it does matter I can hear the noise I've cranked up the bass a little a bit more mid a bit more treble contour is out and we get kind of an old school <laughs> Thrashy sound, let's go to crunch two. Thank you. 
forgive me, I'm not sure what I'm playing there. Um, that's killer. I really like this. This is, does not remind me of the Powerball at all. This is much more, much more in my ballpark. I really like this. Uh, let's go to Lee. <laughs> That's switchable, and you had a different master volume. Add that as your rhythm tone, then switch to maybe a different master setting, and that so you're louder. And you're That's a pretty cool amp. Um, should we do down tune with some actives? Yes. <laughs>
well, what can I say, guys? Um, all my misgivings when I, when, I had, when I had the amp open, um, more than make up for it in what this thing puts out. Um, I'm, in, I'm really impressed. Very cool amp. Very versatile. Um, that has certainly changed my opinion on angles from the past. So, again, I, I've already asked you once before, but if you could click the like, the subscribe, the bell icon, if you haven't already, that would be fantastic. Channel's growing again. It's lovely to see some new faces. Or, and um, if you enjoyed that, please leave a comment down below. Uh, any questions, by all means, give me some, just sit on any, any of the videos. I might even do an FAQ. I'm getting enough questions now. It's been quite an enjoyable experience. So, treat on the next one. Well, it may not be the next video, but I've got coming up, sitting down there, it's about to go on the bench, is a diesel Einstein. So, well, we, can, we, we, we will be continuing on with the German theme. Thanks a lot. Cheers, guys. Catch you later.